Well, here we go. It's a Friday, episode 30. At the end, I'll be doing something, something character related. Don't skip to the end of the book. I have a couple people that, like, you know, before watching my reaction, they skip to the end to see what I think of it. I don't know why you would do that. Like, I don't know, because you should enjoy things in the time that they come, right? I don't know. Like, it may even color how you enjoy a reaction. Flip the end. Oh, he hated this episode. I don't, I don't know. Like, I prefer, but then, then again, there are people who skip to the end of the book. They read the last page of the book before they start a book. People, I know people who do this. I don't comprehend people who do that. So, I don't know. So, you're just going to have to wait. Watch this in chronological order, and at the end, you'll see what I'm doing character-wise. It probably won't be worth the hype, but yeah, we'll see. In the meantime, let's do the episode. Three, two, one. You made him sad. Or Foxy. You made him Foxy. Look at his tail coming out. <laughs> there he is hiding. Done pissed him off now. He's sweating. Hey, Radu, focus. <laughs> He's turning full evil. <laughs> What's up, Foxy? Yeah. <laughs> well, that feels like a waste of energy. It ain't him. Look at it, man. He is looking for your ass. You don't want him to find you. You like that shit. I expect him to be a little afraid. Should have known. Arrogance is never afraid. Quit hurting your clones. I like the sound design here. Watery sound. Very troubling. Shit. That's a very useful flashback right there. Stop this shit. This is going to be a series long problem, I can tell. <laughs> that looks like two tails to me, by the way. I think you waited too long. Okay, so here's a question I have about Deidre or whatever his name is, right? Okay, so he's sitting there on the ground. The other people are distracted for a second, so he's like, okay, I'm gonna put a clone of myself up here in this tree, and he's gonna be talking shit. He'll be looking and observing things and talking shit, which is what he was doing. Meanwhile, I'm gonna hide here under the bushes. Isn't it just as likely they'd find you under the bushes as up in this tree? Like, I, I sometimes wonder what the purpose of this, of this is, other than to fool the audience, to make the audience think that they something happened. What's the purpose of putting this up here 
and you're hiding down here. You're still hiding looking. They got a 50-50 chance of finding you or finding the clone. At this point, like, you know, are you still trying to capture him? You have no arms. Even raises the question, how did you summon that? Well, I guess he was a clay. He was clay, right? But you don't have any arms. You don't have the hand mouth to create a clone of yourself. So where did it come from? I'm not even sure it makes sense in the universe that he was able to do that, right? Because he has no arms. Maybe he has another mouth somewhere else, a part of his body we don't really want to go into. I don't know. But I don't know. Like, sometimes I wonder about the mechanics of this. Like, logistically, how did this happen? And what is the point of it? Like, you know, like I said, you're just as likely to be discovered under the bushes as you are up there. Maybe it was a little bit more obvious up there. He was up in a tree and I made it a little bit more obvious. Maybe. I don't know. But that's what was crossing my mind just now. Sometimes I think it's just to fool the audience. It's just a bait and switch for the audience. Just, in universe, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yep, we're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you better hope you don't find you. Better talk him down. Yeah. Hey, man, you better slow your roll. You're going to hawk out on us. Let's see. Boy. I don't know if you want to do that on the battlefield. I like that transition. I Means very simple. Shit. But it was a cool transition, never nevertheless. Great, so now he's vulnerable to capture. Maybe you just do it long enough to calm his ass down. Hey man, that wasn't cool. Yeah, <laughs> let's get the hell out of here. Um, aren't the clones made out of chakra? How are they still hanging out? Now I'm going to go full tail again. Say, who's that lurking over there? He saw something like this. <laughs> you better skedaddle. So, what tomfoolery have you guys been up to? Yeah, there's a very big disturbance in the force. Looks like it, yeah. Um, this is awkward. Yeah, yeah. He's quite dead, you know. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> and you're not overconfident? <laughs> He's crawling around with no arms. Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> 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 Forgot about the second sight. He was able to very easily figure out where you were through all the brush, right? Hey, deja vu all over again. Yeah, agreed. You're under arrest. I wish we could handcuff you, but...
Why are you so chipper? I don't think you are the number one squad. This dude's hilarious. Four on one. We'll see how this goes. I, mean, I know he's pretty awesome, but, you know. Join the battle. Eight on one. Or at least seven on one. How is he throwing? Or is he just kicking? He's using something in his mouth. How did it get into his mouth? See? Like, we got, we got questions. It had to be transferred from your belt to your mouth somehow. You realize how awesome you have to be to take on four dudes with no arms? Like, I'm very impressed. I gotta admit. I hate this dude, but he's pretty effing impressive. Yeah, stick and move. Oh, shit. Better keep ducking. <laughs> Look at him running up the tree. <laughs> He's going to get flanked here in a second. Oh, he can still do something with this, I bet. Destroy the bird. Yeah, he is. Somebody getting blown up. <laughs> he'll use his actual mouth. That's what he's doing. Maybe that's how he did the shadow clone. The clay clone or whatever. He uses his actual mouth. Okay. Okay. Good enough. That answers that question. Nasty. Uh, rather you didn't. Are you shitting it out? Uh, he's going to make arms. Okay. Probably five arms. Ew. Are you pregnant? Hmm. He's going to blow up. Because he's dead anyway, right? I see. Wasn't expecting a suicide vest. Gotta admit. Shit. He went full predator. Well, I guess we're all dead. Hmm. And how exactly did we pull this off? I'm sure they'll tell us. I guess he bended reality to get rid of the explosion. Or whatever this is. You gotta vomit the explosion into some other reality. Not bad. Assuming you're dead, which is a huge assumption because I never trust anything on this show, then it was a waste of death.
Get the all seen eye, baby. Yeah. There's some cute bunnies and some other reality just got roasted. <laughs> wow, why'd you take such offense to that? Jesus. She seemed like super offended, man. Yeah, check the body. Make him suitable for his viewing. <laughs> He's dead, Jim. No can do. I have to admit, I'm a little surprised. I was still holding out a little bit of hope that maybe she could revive him. Wasn't sure the show had the balls to kill somebody off like this. Should have got to him faster, man. We talked about it. This raises the stakes for him being captured, though. Which I think will happen at some point. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Shut your mouth. If I ask for your opinion, that'll be a cold day in hell. Oh, I see. Hey, man, we need our nuclear weapon. That's what it is. He was a weapon and we used him. The subtext has become text. I've never seen any point in feeling sorry for yourself, right? Just, you know. But, you know, he's a kid, so. I get it. I'm out of here. You were mean. Oh, shit. They are going to bring him back.
Congratulations, Sean. I was almost impressed with you. This is what she talked about before. She's going to give up her life for his. Right, right. This is her purpose. You know, it's interesting because, like I said, it, I'm only half joking. Like, I would be more impressed with the show if they had the balls to actually do this, right? Some old woman we just met sacrificing her life. It's not the same thing. However, it's earned. This is an earned resurrection. She gives, if she gives up her life to you know, raise him from the dead, it was set up ahead of time. Clearly, well, I mean, only a few episodes, but still, it's set up. They didn't just whip it out of their ass. The original writer of the manga, of course, was thinking all this. He had this all plotted out, right? But it's earned. Like, you know, okay, it's not just something you can do every week when you lose somebody. You have to have somebody who has the power to do it, and, it, and she's the only one who knows how to do it. And you have to give up your life. So it's earned. So I'm not saying it's unearned. I'm saying you don't have the, you don't have the balls to kill off anybody important. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because they won't do it. They just abjectly refuse to do it. Yes, they'll kill people. But so far, and you know, people keep saying, oh, well, you know, they'll do it in the future. Yeah, well, okay, well, when that happens, let me know. But it ain't happened yet. So, yeah, like I said, I'm only half to, you know what they say, humor is anger with this makeup on. Like, I just wish you had the balls to carry through. That's all I'm saying. Well, as you can see, what I've decided to do is a character pyramid. Now, I actually looked into some pyramid makers online. There's some online where you can, you know, it basically, it's a graphic interface, and you can fill in the things, and it gives you, like, you know, it gives you the nice pyramid shape, and they're different colors, and, and you can have headers for each category, like, you know, the food pyramid, for instance, and, you know, starches and fats and whatever, you know, so they have categories, and then you put things in those categories, like maybe for starches, we'd put rice, and for protein, we'd put shrimp or something, right, like, that'd be a, a certain kind of dietary pyramid, but... In looking at this shit online, they want me to sign up for shit. I ain't signing up for jack shit. Nothing. I'll just do a what amounts to a pen and paper character pyramid. It'll be clear once the names come in what we're doing here. But basically, like any pyramid, you only have a certain number of slots. The top slot only has enough room for one person. The second row has enough room for two people. The third row has enough room for three people and so on, right? So it's not really a tier list because a tier list is open-ended. You can have as many people in the S tier as you want. This is, there's only one top spot. Only one person can be at the top of the pyramid at any time. And then only two people can be, you know, the next spot, you know, the next level of the pyramid near the top in excellence. And my criteria for who goes where is going to be arbitrary and final. So like, I'll just, it's whatever mood I'm in, you know, the, you know, I'll give my reasoning for what's happening, especially when people are moving up and down, but it's going to be arbitrary. So, you know, there's not going to be like a new, some numerical system or something like that. Yeah. Another thing is, remember, we're comparing people to each other. So if you go up, that means somebody else is going down. So it may be that your character is really awesome right now, but so is the person that's above you. And so you can't nudge them out of that spot because that means they would go down and they're that awesome. And they were already there. So home, there's a certain amount of home field advantage. Sakura is at the top of the pyramid right now by herself because she's been the most awesome so far in the run of the series so far. She's done the most. So for her to go down, she's got home field advantage. So in other words, like if Naratu is as good as her, say he has a run of episodes and he's as good as she has been so far, that's not enough. To nudge her out of the top spot, he has to be better than her. So we'll see. You know, basically, you know, people have been asking in the comments that I do something that's comparing characters to each other and have more characters than just the three I've been doing. And so this is how we're going to do it. So, all right. So Sakura's at top. I don't think that needs much of an explanation, does it? She's been the MVP. She's been awesome. She's been really good. Okay, next spot. There's two slots here. Let's go with number one. And that's going to be Kakashi. He's going to be one of the two people here in the next spot. He's been awesome. His reality warping, whatever the hell that is, has been great. 
He stepped in just now and saved Naratu from God knows what. I feel like he's been stepping up really well. You know, so he belongs here. Now, I'm pretty sure she's going to be dead. But she's not dead yet. And if you're dead, you get taken off the pyramid. Right. But for now, Granny Chiro deserves to be in this spot. Again, for obvious reasons. Not just because of what she just did, but what she's been doing progressively for about the last 10 episodes. She's a badass. Sakura wasn't going to win the fight uh, against Pretty Boy without her. So, you know, I mean, I got to say, I think she's definitely in this spot. I think these three are pretty self-explanatory. No, there's nothing shocking here, right? This one might be shocking. Clayboy, Flyboy, whatever you want to call him. Deidre. Diadera, maybe is how it's pronounced. I don't know. Dude, he's a badass. He's fighting with no effing arms. Even before that, he was a badass. Like, look at what he's accomplished. He's flying around top of the city, going, you know, he takes care of, of Gara one on one. You wouldn't think anybody could solo Gara. He took his ass out one on one. Then, what he's done since then. Like, if I wasn't pretty confident he's dead, he might be at the top spot. It's that simple. Probably not, though, because here's the thing. Like, his arrogance... First of all, he's been defeated, so you're always going to take a loss there. And his arrogance is a pretty massive weakness. But if he is dead, he went out like a gangster. So, the dude's a badass, man. I don't think that can be argued. Like, he's pretty... I gotta say, man, pretty damn impressive. Not to go two villains in a row, but hey, man. He's also been pretty awesome. Pretty Boy was awesome. Now, I'm also pretty confident he's dead. Like I said, some of these are going to be coming off the board pretty fast here. But... Until then, until your confirmation or some time passes and they don't pop back up, you know, don't necessarily give me confirmation, you know, your, from you with your comments, since you've seen the whole series, I'll come to realize as I come to realize, you know, we'll leave it with that, but dead or alive, whatever, you know, be that as it may, his puppet powers were awesome and there's one thing I'm a little unclear on. Okay, so you have his little life module, right? This little life module that pops out. And what was interesting is when I was editing a short where I did a short where this is happening, they actually show it coming out. I didn't notice it the first time. Like, actually watching the episode where she punches him and he shatters, they did a close-up of that thing popping out. And you just feel like it's just a whole part of the thing of how the, the entire puppet's coming apart. You don't really think much of it. But rewatch, it's right there. Like, it's literally right there. They're showing it come out. So that was interesting. But then it lands on the ground, and I don't know how it gets... It doesn't just randomly hit the, another body and fit right into the slot. I don't know how he finagled that. I think I'd have to rewatch it again. I don't think they really show how... It, it's just a, a beating heart inside a pod. How does that get in another puppet's body? That part, I, I don't remember. I mean, they may have shown it to us, but I don't remember like how exactly that happened. But that's interesting. Anyway, either way. Badass. Next up, we've got Neji. I think of the second squad, he's the most impressive. I mean, his vision is really good. You know, like, it, it's very useful, I guess, what I should be saying. Super useful. So, um, he's been a big help. He's really helped him out a lot. So, so I, th I think he just belongs up here, right? We'll see what happens. Like I said, this is, gonna be, this is just the first, first draft, shall we say. Next up is Guy Sensei. You know, I just think that he's got a hell of a team. He's assembled a hell of a team. He seems like he's trained them well. They have good morale. They're good camaraderie. They they work strongly together. So I'm going to give him the credit for the other two. The other two haven't really done anything to stand out to me so far. But guys, since I think has done enough, just if you look at the body of work so far, what those people have contributed, I feel like, yeah, you know, um, This is where he belongs. Fourth row of the pyramid. Along the same lines, uh, you know, what is, is she the fourth Akagi? Fifth? I think she's the fifth Akagi. I think she's the fifth. I'm trying to remember. I, I don't know. But um, anyway, she's done a great job training Sakura. Like, you look at what Sakura was in the original series, now this could just be the writers. But we got in-universe. We're, we're dealing in-universe. We're not talking about any external factors. In-universe, 
She's done a phenomenal job training Sakura. So you got to give it to her. And I'm going to put Naruto here. I even kind of played him putting one more down. But I don't. I think this is all the characters I'm going to do. There really should be four in this row. And then if we do another row, there'll be five, right? But I'm not going to put characters in who don't belong. Like, what am I going to do? Put the dog there? The, these are the only people that belong on the board so far. We just haven't seen enough. There hasn't been enough people. It's been a very small group of people we've been following for the first 30 episodes. So this is it. You know, of the first 30 episodes, I mean, we've got basically nine people that are of interest. Three of them are probably dead. So we need to get some more people in here and more things happening. So, you know, if you're wondering where Sasuke is, well, we haven't seen him except for the cold open. That's all we've seen. So that is what it is. But he, what is my problem with him so far? He hasn't really grown much. He's not much more mature than he was. You know, in this turning on his teammates when you still have a bad guy out there. Okay, yeah. This wasn't, you get you, you thought you had got him. You didn't get him. You keep fighting. Instead, you're just going to let the, the fox out? Like, come on, man. Like, you're just amateur. Immature. He's an immature amateur, you know, like, just come on. Like, it's just, you know, I'm not feeling it. So, like, he needs to grow up. And until he does, he's going to be in the fourth row. He may even drop more if he keeps screwing up. So, you know, dude, you, you got to get your act together, man. Look at what these other people are doing. Way better than you. So, that's where I'm at. Let me know what you think about the character pyramid. Let me know if you think there should be another. You can make nominations and comments if you want to. If people should be included. Offer opinions, whatever. You know, this is an interactive experience. But, uh, yeah. Uh, other than don't tell me if, like, for sure if uh, Pretty Boy's dead or something. Like, I'm, I'm pretty confident he is. But I would like a little bit more time to pass where he doesn't pop up. Because, you know, bait and switch. They're always doing ninja mind games. And the show has no balls to kill, kill people off. So, yeah. You can understand my reservations.